It's not rare for a game to get off to a slow start, but sometimes one gets off to a really slow start. Other times as well, a game simply releases in a state that is arguably or even literally unfinished. This results in many players setting it aside, promising to return to it after a few months of patches and updates. So all that said, it's not rare for fans to simply cut ties rather than commit to 100 hours of misery. But all of the following games did at least manage to turn around their fall fortunes and deliver excellent experiences that you might have actually missed out on. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 8 video games that got really good when you stopped playing. Number 8, Days Gone. For the first 5 hours or so playing Days Gone, I honestly thought it was going to be a total stinker. I got a review copy for free and I was still annoyed that I had put time into it. So egregiously slow were the introductory missions and cutscenes. It was not helped by the game at making the cardinal sin as well of underpowering you in order to make sure the upgrades that you get feel substantial. But that means that for the opening hours, you're just driving around on a slow as hell and clunky feeling motorcycle, up with the basic unreliable shooting mechanics and just going through the open world motions. You know, scavenging here, taking out a bandit camp there, the usual. But the more time you put into Days Gone, the better it becomes. It reveals its hand slowly, yes, but the unique mechanics that it does introduce, including those massive hordes that it sold itself on pre-release, which don't turn up for ages in the campaign by the way, slowly transform this from a generic open world actioner into one of the best zombie titles in a recent memory. The story the story slowly finds its shape while traversing the mountainous regions of Oregon on the back of a motorcycle becomes a joy in itself. With better gear and abilities, the combat finds its groove as well, having you actively look forward to new encounters with bigger groups. It's not without its problems, and the bugs at launch certainly didn't endear people to play on, but it's a shame that we won't see a sequel to Days Gone anytime soon. Number 7. Fortnite like everyone else on the planet, I tried Fortnite's Battle Royale mode at launch and decided, while not bad by any means, it just wasn't for me. The building element offset just how basic the shooting mechanics were, but provided their own problems. Alienating players like me, who didn't want to construct massive contraptions within seconds flat if they wanted to win a gunfight. Throw in a minor amount of weapon variety, little in the way of character customization, and the tendency for players to just hide in bushes during matches, and it was easy to brush it off as another battle royale game among many at the time. But somewhere along the line, Fortnite became another beast entirely, one which that I am genuinely jealous that friends across the globe have been able to experience together. That's because, on the one hand, Fortnite is a true multimedia crossover event, a toy box of endless possibilities where a match is likely to have Dragon Ball Z's Goku fighting John Wick, while Chris Redfield from Resident Evil comes in to sweep up the kills and the best loot. The game constantly reinvents the wheel as well, never resting on its laurels. From constantly switching its tech to keep up with the times and remain cutting edge, including recently jumping to the Unreal Engine 5, to resetting and overhauling its main map, to introducing missions and objectives outside the pure battle royale game modes, to introducing season-long themes and one-time events that create memories for life. Fortnite just kinda has something for everyone today, and it's content is presented with a high degree of quality that its competitors so often fail to match. Number 6. Cyberpunk 2077 we all know the story of Cyberpunk 2077 at this point. The hyped RPG was supposed to set the benchmark for AAA open world games, and while it arguably did that on PC, the console versions were, well, they were not good to say the least. Released in a clearly unfinished state, Cyberpunk needed way more time in the oven. And it's no surprise that many just stopped playing and requested refunds as soon as they saw just how ruinous the release was. But the thing is, even in its fixed state, Cyberpunk 2077 doesn't make an amazing first impression either way. In my experience, anyway, the first few hours were a total slog. Before the world opens up to you and you're given proper motivation alongside the introduction of Johnny Silverhand, the game tricks you into thinking that it's just another open world Ubisoft style game. With most of the map locked and the districts you are allowed to traverse made up of copied and pasted world events and combat encounters, it all feels a little bit heartless. In this section in particular, you can tell that the devs were caught between wanting this to play like a GDA 
of a Witcher. Fortunately, of course, Cyberpunk picks up tenfold from there, introducing some of the most memorable side characters in recent memory, while giving you far more interesting things to do and places to explore. Nowadays, Cyberpunk is a great game, though it's inexcusable that it released in the state that it did. Number five, Battlefield 2042. The Battlefield series had certainly fallen short with previous games. I mean, think the disastrously buggy launch of BF4 or the wonky balance of BF5. But it never hit quite so bad as Battlefield 2042. If unstable servers and an absolute horde of bugs weren't enough, DICE still miscalculated the core of the experience by reinventing many of the series' gameplay staples. In other words, they put a lot of effort in to fix what wasn't broken and then just broke everything in the process. But as has become tradition, DICE quickly set to correcting their errors after the game's launch. However, the extent of the changes and updates needed meant that players were in for a long wait. The game essentially needed at least an extra year of development time, and fans can hardly be blamed for jumping ship when they did. But cut to 2023 and Battlefield 2042 is in a great place. I was always a fan of the core gameplay anyway, and in the months since, that's been fine-tuned. Maps have been redesigned, and a whole bunch of quality of life changes have been made to make this game a joy to play. If you're just completely against going back in, look, I totally, totally get it and support that decision, but the game that exists today is amazing, and if you've never played it, it absolutely is worth jumping into. Number 4, Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn when developer and publisher Square Enix decided to make a follow-up to the surprisingly successful Final Fantasy XI, their first massively multiplayer entry in the Legendary series, a large and passionate fanbase was already sold. But unfortunately, Final Fantasy XIV launched to overwhelming disappointment from fans and critics alike. The list of issues XIV launched with could pretty much fill a textbook. But suffice to say, Square were confusingly completely unprepared for the game's traffic, resulting in server issues so severe that the sales of the game had to be temporarily suspended. Getting it back into the public's hands only heightened the game's other shortcomings as well. A dated engine, a convoluted UI, and poor performance overall. Hell, things got so bad that Square just gave up trying to patch the game, and instead actually remade it almost from scratch. Relaunched as a Realm Reborn, the new and improved Final Fantasy XIV featured a new engine, streamlined UI, a more diverse world, and a story that many consider to be one of the most memorable in the series. In fact, many now consider 14 as a whole to be one of the best games in the series and one of the best online games still running today, which yeah, that's quite the contrast to its launch all those years ago. Number 3, Grand Theft Auto Online. Though GTA 4 did have an online mode, it was GTA 5 which was set to bring the franchise into the multiplayer realm for good, with an entirely separate experience simply called GTA Online. And while it might seem like a sure fire bet in 2023 and an excuse to print money, in 2013 GTA Online truly had the potential to be a failed experiment. In fact, the first couple of weeks were plagued with connection issues, character progression resets, and more. While the lack of content forced players to make their own fun, with the promised co-op heists mode being delayed in Definitely. It was a fun experience, still sure, but seemingly not fun enough to keep the game making millions of dollars daily for the next decade. But with a bit of spit shine here and there, and especially following the heist update, Rockstar leaned hard into GTA Online. Through regular content updates, large and small, the mode, once thought to be dead and buried, became Rockstar's primary focus and continues to remain popular 10 whole years later. Entering the game now is admittedly overwhelming and sometimes exclusive as the community that grew within online became entrenched in the game, but a lot of gamers who quit during those first couple of months or years and never came back arguably missed the boat on this one. Number 2. Rainbow Six Siege Look, I don't want to keep prefacing each of these entries with, oh, it's hard to believe now considering how beloved this game is, but people used to hate it. But, you know, it is kind of hard to believe now considering how popular Rainbow Six Siege is that people really did used to hate it. Not because of its gameplay or anything like that, but because the initial trailer, a great demo of the title's multiplayer extraction mode, where one team defends a hostage and the other team tries to save them, looked absolutely incredible. 
stunning graphics, incredible destruction, and a gritty tone all made it look like something else. But when the game came out, while that mode was still of course present, it became clear that this was definitely a more scripted vertical slice than how the eventual game played. With less impressive lighting, AI destruction, and overall atmosphere, it took a bit for fans to digest. This was compounded by terrible server performance and lag as well, not great qualities for a game as high stakes as Rainbow Six's One Life Rounds. But even then, it was clear that there was something special about Siege, and while some people jumped ship, others experienced the game's initial blossoming period, as Ubisoft stabilized the performance, balanced the teams, and introduced new maps and playable operators that complemented the already excellent foundation. And after spending years adding content to the game bit by bit, that former drought is now an abundant jungle of things to do. Some would argue at this point where too much content was added, but that's an entirely different conversation. Number one, Death Stranding. It's well established now that Hideo Kojima's Death Stranding is simply not for everyone and they that's okay. Nobody really knew what the hell it even was before launch, so when it turned out that the Metal Gear Man's next game was all about traversing the environment and delivering packages in a surreal dystopian hellscape, well, you can see why people wrote it off and decided, hey, this ain't for me. But the thing is, Death Stranding is great, goddammit, it just admittedly takes some time getting used to. That's not helped either by an uninviting first impression, which sees you sitting through your lengthy introductory cutscenes and a meandering first mission before the game even starts properly. Then the first area purposefully limits your options and abilities to get you used to the core gameplay of navigating the environment without tripping over and losing your cargo. And while I personally did love it from the off, I do concede that tripping over your own feet, falling down a river, and getting attacked by ghosts you have to slip slowly sneak through does not make for a fun experience for all. However, stick with it, because Death Stranding truly comes into its own and opens up once you get past this section and into the main map and meat of the game. Here you're given more diverse areas, a larger sense of player progression, and a whole host of other tools to work with including a bunch of vehicles and roads to make your life easier. And with that, you're kitted out for what's, for my money anyway, is one of the best games of the last generation. So, that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Did you give up on any of these games, and did you return to any of them and find that you had a ruddy good time? Let me know, and while you're down there, if you could, please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.